Hi, uh, so this is the fifth video of uh, module two. In this video, I'm going to handle the topic transmitter power. So again, as usual, I'll just go through the module. So we have done all these parts. The first part is done. And in the last video, I had taken till phone sphere. So today, in this video, I'll be taking transmitter power. Okay. So let's quickly start. transmitter power okay now so before understanding uh, transmitter power we have to go through one topic which is not included in syllabus but it's important in order to understand transmitter power expression okay so that topic is integration of radar pulses so i'll uh, go through that topic first and then come back to transmitter power now uh, this uh, in integration of radar pulses. So we sh uh, I have uh, said um, in class that uh, when we send a pulse from the transmitter side, it's not just one pulse with which you will conclude about the uh, detection, right? Whether the target was detected or not. Usually we will have to use multiple pulses, right? Uh, so these, uh, one second. These multiple pulses would be finally integrated. So this integration is actually done uh, in order to improve the probability of detection, right? So that is to improve the system performance. So basically you are uh, increasing the probability of detection. So in order to improve the performance, PD has to be perfect, right? So that's the reason we are doing this integration. Now, so there are two options for this integration, okay? So one is, so I'll just come back to this slide, this slide later. So there are two uh, process, two options uh, uh, through which integration can be done, okay? So I'll just go through these lines once more. So the target produces several pulses each time the antenna beam sweeps through its position. What is one sweep? So the TP, basically PRI, right? Uh, pulse reputation interval. So like that many TPs would be sent and then the integration would be done that the sweeps would be added together in order to uh, get the final PD, right? Now, so uh, this is also done to enhance the signal to noise ratio, right? So in, to improve the SNR, we do this integration of pulse outputs. And we all know that integration is equal to equivalent to low pass filter. So uh, as the samples of integration are increasing, we'll get lesser noise power, right? So it is better to have more samples for integration and the bandwidth would be narrower, okay? Now, so we have two options uh, by which we can do this integration. One is integration before detection. So what is this before detection? So uh, I hope you remember the block diagram of radar receiver. So it has LNA mixer and then the IF stage and then IF stage along with matched filtering and then the and second detector, right? And then the uh, video amplifier. So we saw in previous videos that um, I also took in class about the envelope detector, which is a combination of IF stage, IF filter, uh, the second detector and the video amplifier, right? So before the setting, second detector of the integration is performed, it is called as pre-detection or coherent detection. After the detection, that is after the second detector block, if the integration is performed, it is called as post-detection or non-coherent detection, okay? So which is better? So that's what we are going to see, okay? So which is better, pre-detection or post-detection? Actually, pre-detection is uh, more noise-free, okay? Pre-detection is more noise-free uh, because uh, the lossless, theoretically in this, the losses would be zero, okay? But the problem with pre-detection is it requires phase of the echo pulses to be known, okay? It requires the phase of the echo signal pulses to be known and preserved and then uh, it should be combined. It should uh, it should combine the sine waves. That is, the integration should be done without 
in phase without the losses okay so that is the scenario in pre detection in post detection that is after detection after the second detector or non coherent detection this process is actually much easier okay so this is easier than pre detection but the problem is the losses are more when compared to pre detection so this post detection is easier to accomplish than pre detection integration since the phases of the echoes are not preserved okay and only the envelopes of the pulses need to be aligned because it is after detection right so only the envelope of the pulses need to be uh, aligned to perform the addition that is the integration so here there is a integration loss okay so that is the uh, difference between these two uh, integrations now so what is this now if pre detection is used the if suppose now what is n okay we need to know what is this n okay so n is nothing but uh, it is usually called as hits per scan that is pulses per scan okay or one sweep you can say okay so imagine we are assume we are uh, we have assume, assume there are n pulses all of the same snrs okay signal to noise ratios so if uh, per this pre detection is performed that is they are perfectly integrated by lossless pre detection integrator then this follows okay that is snr the total snr will be n into the snr of the first pulse or snr of one pulse okay so this is uh, the condition when pre detection is used because we don't have any losses so now if post detection is used so this is the scenario what the total snr is less than that of n times snr of the one uh, first pulse so this is because of the losses in the second detector we all know that uh, there is non linear uh, action in the second detector right so this you know, loss in, in the loss in the integration efficiency is caused by the non linear action of the second detector okay so this converts some of the signal energy to noise energy in the rectification process so this is where we have one term called as integration efficiency okay so when post so pre detection is difficult because it requires maintaining the phase right so post detection is usually preferred because it is relatively easy but then we have a loss and hence we use this expression in order to compensate for the losses okay now um one second yeah so this is integration efficiency ei of n which is the ratio of snr of one pulse divided by n into snr of n pulse okay now so this improvement in snr where n pulses are integrated is called as integration improvement factor which is n into when you take n this side n into ei of n that term is called as i of n which is integration improvement factor that is s, s by n of one pulse by s by n of snr of n pulses okay now so this is what we need to know okay so now we can go back to our uh, transmitter power okay yeah so uh, because the integration is not ideal okay so i because we are using post detection so in post detection integration is not ideal hence we use the term integration efficiency that is ei of n so where n is the number of pulses per scan okay now the bandwidth of the pulse width are grouped together <clears throat> so this i'll tell you uh, when we see the expression okay now <clears throat> so <clears throat> this s by n is the snr to produce pd for pd is probability of detection for one pulse snr to the base n is the snr <clears throat> to produce the probability of detection for n pulses okay now this expression which we see here is the modified range radar range equation which we have already seen in uh, previous topics 
where we had derived this expression for modified radar range equation. Okay, so PT GAE into sigma by 4 pi square KTB is nothing but input noise NI, FN is the noise power, sorry, noise figure, and S naught by N naught is nothing but S out by N out. Okay, so output SNR. So when this term is minimum, R max R will be maximum, right? This was the modified radar range expression. Now, <clears throat> so after integration, so this uh, till now, whatever expressions we have learned in that we consider only one pulse, right? Did we consider integration? No. <clears throat> so we were considering SNR of only one pulse. So we didn't mention one, but then we were not integrated, right? So when integration is, so in practical scenarios, we do integration. So we can't conclude PD with just one pulse or one sweep, right? So we do the integration of many pulses, multiple pulses, okay? So now when integration is used, that SNR should be replaced with SNR to the base N, that is SNR of N pulses, after integrating N pulses, okay? So this is the modified radar range equation after integration. So basically we are using post detection process, correct? Hence the integration is not losses, it has losses. Hence, this term has to be replaced with integration efficiency, that is EI of N. So this is the modified expression where S by N, SNR of N pulses is replaced with this, right? So we saw the expression, this expression. So in this, when S, SNR of N pulse comes in, comes this side, you'll get SNR of 1 pulse by N into EI of N, right? So that's what we have replaced here, SNR of 1 pulse by n into i of n, so this will go to the numerator. Okay, <clears throat> so this is the final modified radar range equation after integration. Okay, fine, so you can see n here. Fine, okay. Now, transmitter power. So we were always talking about Pt, okay. So PT is nothing but the peak power, right? So I hope you remember the uh, figure which I had so shown in module one. PT is the peak power of the pulse, okay? But then when you com uh, compare it with the complete cycle, that is complete duty cycle, that is TP. For the complete TP, we don't consider PT. We have something called as average radar power, P average. So this is usually considered this is uh, usually considered in radar rare equations, okay? So what is the uh, relation between P average and PT? PT into duty cycle is P average. What is duty cycle? The width of the pulse divided by the total pulse, right? Time. So this is width of the pulse is nothing but tau. Total time of the pulse is PRI, it is pulse duplication interval, that is T. TP is nothing but 1 by FP. So you can write the same expression as PT into tau FP. Tau FP is nothing but duty cycle. So duty cycle into peak power is the average power. Okay. So usually for pulse radars, the duty cycle would be in the range 0 0.001 till 0 0.5. Okay. So 0 0.5 is actually uh, very, uh, I mean the, Pulse width is too big, correct? So usually it is in this range, 0 0.001 to 0 0.5, okay? But when you com uh, compare it with continuous wave radar, so do, does continuous wave radar have a duty cycle? No, right? It doesn't have. So uh, usually continuous wave radar's duty cycle is taken as unit, correct? So it transmits continuously, right? You don't have to differentiate the pulse width and width. Yeah. So this is the typical values. Now, so we had an expression of R max in terms of PT, which has to be now converted in terms of P average, right? So this R max, so we have to convert this PT will be now replaced with PT by tau FP, correct? Sorry, P average by tau FP, correct? So this tau and BN is grouped together here, FP is kept here. Okay, it's the same expression. PT is replaced with P average by tau into FP. Okay, so this two are grouped together because uh, in PFA PD video I had told that tau is nothing but the reciprocal of band, correct? 
So usually this expression will come, we will become unity. So they are grouped together. Okay. So and we always consider noise bandwidth as 3 dB bandwidth. Correct. Yeah. So this is the final expression of a modified radar range equation in with in terms of P average, in terms of integration efficiency, and SNR of one pulse. Okay. Now, usually uh, we uh, don't consider P average also. Usually we express this R max expression in terms of average energy. That is energy per pulse or energy per repetition. So that is E to is equal to P average by FP. Okay. P average by FP. FP. Okay. F suffix P. So this P average by FP can be replaced with E. So in textbook, it will be given as EP, okay? EP, right? So this, so if transmitted waveform is not a rectangular pulse, it is more convenient to express the radar equation in terms of energy. Hence the equation will become this. Now one more modification can be written as, this ET is actually energy per repetition, right? Energy or you can say it as energy per pulse. So, but we need the total energy, right, for all the n pulses. So in that case, this ET into n, right? This n and this ET can be grouped together. n into ET can be replaced by n E capital T. Okay, so that E capital T is the total energy of n pulses. Okay, so that it is, I've included that in my notes and it is there in the textbook also. Right. So, A E capital T, G A E, sigma E I of N by this entire uh, denominator. Okay. So, that is the final expression. Okay. So, that's all for transmitter power. Now, in the next video, I'll, uh, I'll explain about pulse repetition frequency and range ambiguities. Okay. Uh, yeah, one more thing is, I'll just... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so this is the notes, transmitter power. So actually you don't have to write about the integration of radar pulses, but then it is good if you mention about it. Uh, you can, I will send you the slides anyway. You can refer it. So this is my notes, transmitter power, and the modified version, and then the explanation of EIFN and then what are each terms and then the final expression. So here, EP into N is replaced with ET, energy of total, total energy of N pulse, that is N into EP. This is the final expression, okay, fine. Okay, so that's all for this topic. Um, thank you then.